In this video, I'm gonna be talking about DaVinci Resolve, and if you're new to the software and looking to learn some more, then this video is for you. I'm gonna jump in and show you some of the main features, walk you through the interface and give you some basic tips to get started. I also have the chapters marked out on the play bar and in the description below, so feel free to jump around or re-watch any part that you might need. Let's jump in. All right, so here we are on the computer and I've got uh, Google Chrome loaded here with a search bar. Just search into Google. I'm gonna show you how to download DaVinci Resolve real fast. Uh, search DaVinci Resolve download and it'll be the first uh, link that comes up and you click on it and that takes you to the DaVinci Resolve um, product page from, from Blackmagic. And if you scroll down, you see these two buttons here for DaVinci Resolve 18. Uh, the free download is going to be the button you're going to click unless you want to purchase the studio version. For now, we're going to download the free resolve. It has pretty much everything you need. It has almost everything that you're going to get out of Final Cut or Premiere just in the uh, free version, which is DaVinci Resolve 18 here and not the studio. If you have uh, purchased a license, you can download the studio. They are two different downloads. You can't download one software and then input the license for the free. It won't be. They're two different um, download files. So you want to make sure you do the right one. So when you're here, you click on what OS you have. I'm running a Mac. So here it's going to load up a, um, you know, information sheet where I can register that I'm downloading it. I'm going to put all my info in and I'm going to click register and download. I already have that installed, so I'm not going to do that right now. And then once you have that downloaded, you can come and open DaVinci Resolve. Once you have this set up, or once you have this open, it's going to be, it's always going to open to your uh, database and your libraries. So if you're coming from Premiere, you don't necessarily have um, the same functionality as this, but Final Cut, it works very similar where you have a project library. And then um, within that library, you can have multiple different projects. This is very much the same way. You can set up different databases. So over here, I can add a project library. I can name it whatever I want. I can browse to the uh, folder that I want to save that entire project database under and save it there and hit create and have multiple um, libraries over here that can house multiple projects, if that makes sense. Um, and this is a project I've already created. Now, if you're wanting to create folders, you just right click in here and you can add new folders to help organize that, uh, new projects, import, all that. You can also click right here for new project and this will create a project, um, whatever you title it, and it'll open it and you can start from there. Um, or you can select one and click open, which I already have created, and it will load that project or open that project for you. So that's setting up a database. And now that you've seen the actual software open up, we're gonna go through a couple key things that will help you set up and get used to uh, Resolve if you're coming over from Premiere or Final Cut and you just, it's a little bit weird, it's a little bit different. This is gonna help you get familiar with the software as well as set up some key functions uh, to help you succeed here in, a, in the future as you learn this software. So up in the preferences or in the DaVinci Resolve menu bar, there is a custom or a keyboard customization uh, button that you'll click. And this is, I already have mine all custom to kind of how I use it. And that's why it's titled My Shortcuts. But if you click this little uh, toggle right here, you can select what software you're coming from and it will change the keyboard shortcuts uh, to match as best as it can the other software. So, you know, if you have keyboard shortcuts that you use from Premiere, and you're used to using it and they bring up, you know, the, the things you want to bring up real quickly, you can click that and it will adjust your keyboard to have the shortcuts that Premiere uses for those same functions. So that's the one of the first things I would do when you're jumping into Resolve. So the next thing I would do is to come up to DaVinci Resolve uh, menu bar and then go into preferences. And so in preferences, this is where you can also set up your media storage, which is kind of like the cache files. And then another thing we want to look at is your memory and GPU. Um, 
For me, I want as much of that memory that I can use as possible, so I'm gonna bump that stuff up. I'm also gonna set the GPU selection to auto. And then under user, I'm gonna to go to the project save and load section. I'm gonna make sure that I have these project backups and, and the live saves selected so that it will automatically save and you can check your parameters and change these different things um, where uh, you can have it set up to the way you want so it backs up your projects and it backs up uh, you know your saves so that you're not losing your progression of your edit and then right here is where you can select where you would do that so I would I would highly suggest you turning those on and setting up that so that you don't uh, lose your progress and then uh, and then just click save and that's all set up and ready to go go down to the bottom right and real quickly I'm gonna have you look over here this home button, just for your reference, will bring up the project manager that we saw earlier before it actually opened up the project itself. If you ever need to go back here or open up different projects or whatever, you can do that there. But then right next to it is the cogwheel and that's the settings, the project settings. So in DaVinci Resolve, um, you have all the project settings are right down here in that little toolbar. And this is where I would set up my resolution. I would set up my frame rate and of what I want the final project to be. Now I can bring different uh, frame rates into this project, but I want to set this up for my final output of what I'm going to put out on the final project. So having it set to UHD at 24, that's great. Color management um, is where you basically select what color uh, system you're in. And by default, it's the DaVinci YRGB, which is great. I use that all the time. Um, if you're needing ASUS, this is where you change that, but that's obviously more advanced and you're probably not needing that right now. And then for lookup tables, so LUTs, um, this is where you can open up the LUT folder and it'll open up the folder on your computer and your database that houses all of your LUTs. And there are some LUTs in there by default. If you want to add your own LUTs or LUTs you've purchased, that's how you do it. You would open up this folder and it opened it up over here and it would, it would open up this LUT folder and you would drag and drop those LUTs into that folder and then you'd be able to access those from the color page and I'll show you that a little bit later. So I'm gonna cancel out of there. Those are just a couple things I would add and change before and understand before you actually import footage and go any further into Resolve. And I'll just drag in a clip here. And I have one from DaVinci Resolve's uh, free kind of test footage for their B-RAW that you can just download. So here I dragged it in and it's telling me that the frame rate of my clip is different than the frame rate of my project. As you saw earlier, I set up the project to be 24 frames a second. And this is saying that it is, um, you know, a different frame rate. I do not want to change the frame rate of my project. I want my final project to be 24 frames a second. So I'm going to hit don't change. So now that it's imported, I can click on it and see some of the metadata that's on here. And you can see it's 50 frames a second is what this was shot in. It's Blackmagic RAW, and this is the resolution, 6K. So you can drag and drop all the files in here uh, that you want. You can use this to create a timeline if you wanted just this clip to be in there. I'll, you can right click and go to create timeline using selected clips. I usually don't do it that way because I set up my timeline separate and then drag my clips into the timeline. So I'll show you that. So I right click up here and I go to timelines and I create new timeline. You can do that by hitting command in or control in on windows and it'll open up the little uh, pop up here and I can name my timeline, uh, whatever I want. And then I can also change the start code and how many tracks, like let's say I want five video tracks, five audio tracks although it didn't let me do that, five audio tracks. I can change if it's stereo or mono or whatever, 5.1, empty timeline or use selected clips, all that kind of stuff. And then I can select use project settings because I want it to be 24 frames per second, just like the project settings I already had. And I'll hit create. So if I drag this down um, and I'm gonna just put this on the first video, uh, layer in this timeline. If I go back to the cut page, you can see that here's the overview of the length of the entire clip. This top little section has the entire length of the timeline. So right now it's only one video, um, but that would be the entire length of bird's eye view of the entire 
length of your timeline. And this section down here will show you uh, kind of the zoomed in version of, of your timeline where you have all your different clips and things and you can turn off, you know, the video or the audio of those, those layers right there, but you're not going to see the audio separate and that kind of stuff. So this is very, this is for like quick cutting. If you got a bunch of clips up here and you're dragging them down and you're trimming them up, right? That's kind of what you do there. I don't use that typically, but that's what this page is for. The edit tab over here, this is where I edit mainly. And, um, you know, I'll drag something in. I can just quickly, you know, drag the end of something and I can just edit that way. I also like to be able to see my audio layers and you can always, you know, zoom those in. If I were to, let's say quickly with audio, one of the things I do when, when I bring in uh, a clip is I'll right click and I will just normalize the audio levels. Even if I'm not using the audio, I'll normalize it to zero so that I can see the waveform. Um, and if I need to sync up anything, it's there. You have, um, you know, the, the project or the uh, media files area. You can create bins. Uh, so there's also smart bins that you can create, which automatically bring in stuff from folders on your hard drive. But you also can create bins within here. And let's just say I want all my video files in one bin. I can, you know, they're folders. I can drag that in there. And then um, you can just, you know, fully organize your project and all the files that you have in this window. Then you also have the effects and transitions window. Uh, if that's not there, up here on the left, there's this little toggle that kind of takes that away and allows the uh, timeline to stretch the full distance of the of your window of your your computer screen monitor. And to add that, you would uh, toggle this that gives that room and and click the effects button right here. So once you have that open, that's where you'll find adjustment clips on the effects or you know transitions or fades or all that stuff is going to be in this little toolbox of effects. And then over on the right, I have the inspector open, the timeline inspector, and you can take that away by hitting inspector up here and it'll go away. And this gives you kind of like a preview and program kind of thing where you can uh, load stuff in here, make clips and uh, make cuts and then drag it down. Um, but typically I have the inspector open just cause it gives me access to the settings of that clip very quickly. And if you want this to be full length, instead of, you know, being cop cut off by the timeline, you can click this little tab up here and it brings it down full length so that if you're editing something, you're rescaling and you have all these things open, um, you're able to just see all the settings at once and not have to like scroll, you know, through this tiny little window up here. Then there's the, this is the video. This kind of will help you zoom if you're zooming in on a clip or whatever. Um, that's where you can do that. You can make position adjustments up here. You can rotate up here. You can do all those type of settings, uh, cropping, you know, if you're cropping off and you're not actually moving it, but, or zooming in, you're just cropping the video file itself. You can crop from here. Uh, dynamic zoom is pretty cool. It'll just slowly zoom in over time on your clip. So if I turn that on, I say linear, it's, it's going to be one speed the entire time but it's gonna like slowly zoom out and the camera, the actual clip is moving forward so it's hard to see there, um, but you can ease in or ease out or whatever with those dynamic zooms. And those are kind of fun to use on clips, especially interview clips if you just want just a little bit of motion on a talking head shot or something like that. Um, yeah, composite will show you just the opacity and then how the blending mode is, the composite mode, blending mode from Adobe, that's kind of the same thing. Um, and then you can do speed changes here. There's also the stabilization, uh, resolve stabilization does a really good job. So this is a really shaky shot. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be perfect. Like you're not gonna remove all this, um, shakiness, but you know, you can use different modes perspective. You click stabilize. It's going to analyze the entire clip here and it's going to try to stabilize to what you want. So I'll, um, you know, I have the cropping ratio, uh, 0.5 smoothing 0.25. So it's not going to get rid of all of it, but it's going to smooth it out a little bit. So it's not just jerky and, and bouncing around. I'll go ahead and remove that. It'll will zoom in and you can tell how much to zoom in. One thing that you will have to get used to with resolve. And I don't know about final cut, but for premiere, you know, you're using 
one through zero or one through 100 using like full numbers and in resolve you're almost using you know the decimal points of things like it's kind of confusing a one is like 100 percent basically and so like 0.25 is like 25 percent it's just different the way you look at it and the numbers you use than it is for premiere so you have to get used to that um that's just something you'll you'll do over time you're not going to be instantly used to it but that's stabilization you can do lens correction if you have a distorted lens you can also click analyze and it'll automatically analyze the distortion of that image and it'll de uh, distort it and then you have the read time and scaling and that's just the video section audio section this is where you can adjust volume manually. You can do panning if you need to. Um, these two things right here, the voice isolator and dialogue leveler are, uh, I believe, studio versions only. Uh, I have the studio version, so they're here. Um, and they do what they say. They isolate the audio, the voice uh, in your audio clip, and then they level the dialogue so that um, it's not like really quiet and then really loud or whatever. Um, it does it automatically with a uh, you know, algorithm in the background. It does a really good job. It's pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> I don't use it on everything, but it's nice to have in a pinch. And then you have pitch, will, which will change the, the tone of the audio. Speed changes and then an equalizer over here where you can do, um, you know, you can equalize the audio. You can also do all this in Fairlight, but they have it here for quick changes if you need it. These are clip based. So if one clip is really bad and you need to adjust the equalizer on just that clip, that's where you do it. You do it right here. And then over in Fairlight, we do like the entire clip or the entire layer, you know, video one layer or audio one layer, the entire audio layer we could adjust. You can do the clip adjustments in Fairlight too. I just find it easier just to do it right here uh, when you get a chance. And then if there's any effects that are applied to this clip, they would show up here. The settings and parameters would show up here. Transition, same thing. Uh, and then image, it'll show you, okay, I have raw here. So you can do all the raw adjustments that you want. You don't have to go to the color tab to do the raw adjustments. You can do it right here. Right now it's set to project and the project settings. And I'm going to show you that once we get to color because I find that I don't touch anything with color uh, unless I'm in the color tab, just because it's all there at my fingertips. I don't need to do anything here, but you can, if you needed to, uh, do it from the image tab. And then the file here, this is kind of what we saw over in the, um, media thing, the metadata, it shows you all the information from the, the actual clip itself. So let's jump over to the fusion, uh, page. I'm not going to go in depth there. You could spend just hours in here. This is, if you've ever used After Effects, um, it, it's a very robust software with for motion graphics and VFX and all kinds of stuff. This is very similar, except for it uses nodes instead of layers. If you have not used nodes, um, they are kind of hard to learn, I will say. I'll be honest. They're, they're a little bit harder to learn than layers if you're used to Photoshop and other things. That it's just a different way of thinking. Um, it's quicker once you get into it because you can bring a node that has, you know, an effect that maybe want you need on like seven different layers instead of putting a seven different instances of that effect on one on seven different layers. You bring out one node and you attach it to seven, seven different nodes and it, it does the same thing. So it's it's a lot cleaner and a lot quicker once you get used to the node based system. Um, I am not used to it as far as effects are concerned. I don't use uh, a whole lot of fusion yet as I've jumped into it. Um, if there's something that's already built in here or quick things like drop shadows and things like that, I'll do that. Uh, but for the most part, I still do all my effects in After Effects because I've just spent years in After Effects and it's just faster and easier. At some point, I do hope to spend the hours and weeks it will take to shift my brain over to fusion. Um, if you have not used After Effects, Jump into Fusion. Find some tutorials that show you, um, you know, Fusion on YouTube. There's there's a lot out there, um, and they can jump in and show you uh, how to use Fusion. And then let's go to the color tab or window. So this is, and it might look a little different depending on your screen and how you have it all, you know, oriented and all that stuff. But this is the color uh, tab and color window. This is kind of the the money of resolve. Um, 
And so for me, I have it set up like this. Um, and I'll quickly, again, up here in each uh, window, up on the top left and the top right is where you kind of access all the windows within that, uh, you know, workspace. The color workspace has a gallery, a LUT folder, you know, lit library, media pool. If you have, you know, need to bring in some different media clips that you had from uh, that you imported. Then over here you have the timeline, which will bring up the timeline view and kind of show you that overall thing from the cut page that shows you the entire timeline. Um, you can turn that off and clips. Clips will show you all the different clips uh, that are on your timeline. So you can select each clip and edit their color separately all from this page. Uh, and then nodes obviously is this section. This is where you're going to make all of your color adjustments. And I'll go over this here in just a second. And then the effects tab has all your uh, effects that you can add for color, um, you know, stuff like, and, and sharpness and blurs and noise and all that stuff. So here is where your uh, window is going to be. This is going to show you um, your clip and all your adjustments. You can use these little tabs here to, um, you know, do an image wipe. If you have another image, um, let's say you're trying to get the same look as a different clip that you have or a different video, you can bring it in here and uh, show both those at the same time and adjust those settings. Then you, again, you have the node tree area. This is where all your different nodes are going to be, where you make your color adjustments. And then uh, kind of like layers, but a little bit different. And then down here is where all your color adjustments are going to happen. Um, you have the raw camera settings. You have a color matcher. Um, if so if you have a color board that you have up, you can actually, you know, click on these and then click up here on the color matcher and it'll, it'll adjust your color to exactly what that color board is saying in that clip. Uh, and then you have the primary color wheels, which are very, very powerful. And you're going to use these a lot and they have all kinds of settings this looks crazy. I'm sure if you've never dealt with resolve, there's so many settings here that to, can be adjusted, but if, you're just going to take time going into it. You also have within this primary color wheels, you have the color bars you can adjust if you wanted to do that. So lift, gamma, gain, and offset. So this is kind of like shadows. It's the low areas. Gamma is the middle areas. Gain is the higher areas. And then offset is just moving all of the image up or down in exposure, basically. Then you have the log wheels, which are actually shadow, midtone, highlights, and offset. These, this is a lot more specific. So this is not going to be a whole region. If I were to lower the shadows, you're going to look over here um, at my waveform here. And just that little bit of shadows is being pulled down. Not everything, just a little bit of the shadows. If I come over here and I do the lift, you're going to see the entire image, even, even this top line, is moving lower. So it's... The uh, color wheels kind of do a general adjustment. I mean, it is, it's weighted for the shadow area, the lift is, but in the log, it's literally only taking the shadow um, percentage and moving it down and everything, everything else stays the same. It doesn't adjust at all. And then you have the HDR color wheels. So if you're shooting something and you have a high dynamic clip, dynamic range clip, excuse me. Uh, this is where you would edit that and you have full range uh, from black, dark, shadows, global uh, is the overall. And then you go up to light, highlight, and specular. It's massive the amount of adjustments you can do with HDR, which I actually have never shot anything with HDR, so I've never used that. Uh, and then you can get it from the, the zone graph as well in the HDR um, little tab here. Then you have the RGB mixer, Motion effects, you can do quick uh, noise reduction here, temporal or spatial noise reduction by just doing an adjustment. If this was really noisy, I would start out with a low setting, do, you know, every one frames. You can do like every three frames, you know, it just changes the speed. Uh, you can do faster, better or none. Uh, motion range depends on how much motion is there. And then right here, these are locked right now, which is fine. You can adjust, you know, how much noise reduction you're doing. Now, this will slow down your your computer a lot noise reduction slows everything down so before i go any further in here i i do want to adjust and show you how to uh change the camera settings or make something rec 709 there's a couple ways of doing it when i have a raw file i'm going to do that through the camera raw tab or through my project settings when i do not have a raw file 
I'm going to select a node and I'm going to either drop a LUT that converts it to Rec 709 if I have one, or I'm going to come into the color space transform and I'm going to add it here. And this gives me the option to select what I shot in. So this is a clip that I downloaded. I don't know exactly what they shot in, um, but I'm pretty sure it was the film. And then the input gamma would be, you know, what camera they did the 6K Gen 4, I think. Um, no, they did Gen 5 on, I don't think, the, I don't even know if the camera that they shot on is on here. Um, either way, just for, just to look at it, um, you can see that this converts this to a Rec 709 image instead of a really flat log profile image. I'm going to reset this node and I'm going to show you how to do it with RAW. You can either do it manually on each clip or you can do it through the product, project settings like I talked about earlier so that all of the RAW clips in your project will automatically have these settings. So in the camera raw section of the settings, you would change this to whatever you shot with. I didn't, this clip is not from Ari. This is a black magic raw clip. So I would select it uh, in this toggle down and then I'd make sure it's full res project, all this stuff. It, default, it'll actually have the apply LUT and everything on it. I turned this off earlier so that you could see the flat profile that I was working with. Um, and then you set all the settings to what you want. So you know, even if you shot in Gen 4 on a Pocket 4K, you could actually change that to Gen 5 here in uh, post. And you can change your white balance. Let's say I shot something and it was just terrible um, and it was, you know, not the right thing. I can come over here and I can adjust my white balance, um, but I'm going to keep that as shot. Color space is fine. Uh, Black Magic, Black Magic Film, that's that's fine. Uh, the highlight recovery, I'm obviously all, almost always going to check because I want to make sure I recover some of the highlight data that might have get got blown out in the raw file. And then I'm going to click Apply LUT as well. And when I hit Save, you're going to see this adjust to a Rec. 709 image. So the reason it did that is because I've adjusted all raw parameters that I bring into that are Black Magic Raw to automatically apply the Rec. 709 LUT and those exposure. Uh, compensation settings. I can come in here and adjust it still. So it's set to that and it has the LUT on it. I can click on this project here and go down to LUT. So right now the decoding is using the project settings I just adjusted. I can go down and change it to clip, which would allow me to do everything I just did on the single clip right here. So if I uncheck the apply LUT, it's going to uncheck it because I just changed this clip to not using project settings, which is what I just set up in the project settings but instead using whatever I want to do with this clip. And wh how, why you'd use this, if you already had your project settings set up, let's say this one clip was you know, underexposed. I can come in here and I can change that to clip and then I can adjust the ISO to go higher and say I wanted it to be exposed like that. That's why I would do something like that. Otherwise, I'd keep everything, the project settings that I just set up so that it's all already done for me. So back over to the color warper and, and everything, this is uh, much, you'd be able to see a lot more now that I've converted this to Rec. 709. If I were to drag this in or adjust this, you're going to see some of those greens are shifting. Hopefully you can see that it shifts a little bit yellow. And if I like bring this down and I bring this yellow down, like look at that grass, how the color is just gone. Or I can move it up to red or I can, you know, really green it up. Let's just make this look like it's springtime. You can do some adjustments there and it's not changing anything on the shirt. It's not changing the hair. Uh, it just whatever is in that hue is going to get adjusted. It's a pretty cool little tool there. And then uh, I'll go back over to Curves just to show you, you know, what that looks like as I'm dropping some stuff in here. Um, if I were to come over to, you know, hue versus saturation and just say I want those greens to be, you know, really, 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 really bright. And just drag or not bright, but just saturated. I can bring those greens up. I can come over here and say I want that to be really, really bright in there as well. Or maybe I want it really dark. I don't know. So just darken that a bit. And you can see some of those adjustments. If I come up here, if you could hit the little number on this, uh, um, on this node, if you click that, it'll turn off those adjustments so you can see what that uh, node is doing. I'll again reset this node and we'll move over to uh, our qualifier. This is where you can qualify. If you take this little eyedropper and you just start dragging it on the screen, what you're going to see 
is it's going to start to select just that color range that you drug over. If I hit this little effects icon, it's going to show you what I'm selecting. Everything that you can see is selected. Everything that's gray is not selected. So then I can come in and I can fine tune, adjust, you know, saturation and brightness and other things of what I want to actually adjust. Let's say I just want to adjust that. I can do that. Um, that's what the qualifier tool is for. Then you have the window tool. This is where you can do different windows where let's say I just want to highlight this person right here and change the color on them and brightness and everything else be darker. That's kind of what you do for that. That's what the window is. And the window tracker is great as well. So let's say, let me just throw a window up here. And I want this window to be right over this post. That's, that's what I'm adjusting. I can come to this window and I can track backwards and it's gonna track. Now it's gonna adjust and manipulate a little bit because it, it's not sure what I'm tracking. Uh, so it's gonna adjust it. But overall, it's gonna push those, uh, it's gonna put some keyframes there and it's gonna follow whatever that is. And you can do different tracking and, and do different little windows and stuff that will actually make that a little bit better. But let's say you want uh, to brighten someone's face up and you want it to track their face through that entire clip, that's how you do that. You create a window and you can track that window to their face and it does a really good job. This is the blur and sharpen tool. This is where you can blur or sharpen things. Uh, blurs right here, sharpens right here, and you can just quickly, if I drag down, you're gonna see it like over sharpen it. It's not gonna look good, but it gives you a lot of fine tune adjustments. If you bring it down on the radius, it'll sharpen. If you bring it higher, it'll start to blur. Um, and then this is the scaling of how big the the sharpening is doing um, and you just play with that that's where you can do some uh, sharpening or blurs if you need to over here I always have waveforms up <clears throat> you can adjust and do parade, parade vector scope other things um, but I'm typically just looking at the waveforms for the most part And this is where you're going to see the audio, all the audio clips as I play back. You're gonna see all the waveforms, all that kind of stuff here. And then over here is the main mixer. So you can add effects specifically to those uh, layers or those clips, or you can add them straight to the entire A1 timeline um, layer, which is uh, what I do a lot of times. And I can come in here, you can add effects and change, take out you know, noise or whatever. You can do the dynamics. So if I double click this, I can add compression and do all my compression uh, things and limiters and all that good stuff. Um, turning it on or off, well, you know, that's how you do that there. Um, and then you can always reset. I, I, if you haven't noticed, I'm just clicking this little, that's, that's a reset button for these areas. Um, that's everywhere in Resolve, so you can find that everywhere. Then you can do the EQ here, which will, I showed you how to EQ each individual clip in the edit page, but you can do an overall timeline EQ here uh, and have some presets here as well. And then if you're doing some panning or any uh, surround sound, you can do that here where you can add those different uh, surround sound points. And then the deliver page, they have a, a bunch of custom delivery uh, profiles. You can just select if you're uploading to YouTube, you know, you can say, all right, I'm doing UHD YouTube. I click this, it's going to have all the default YouTube settings. And then you just browse to where you want to do it. You save the title, you add it. So let's just, you know, put this in here and I'm going to hit add to render queue. It's going to drag it over here to your render queue. So you can do that with multiple timelines within this project and hit render and it'll render all of them back to back, which is pretty cool. So that's it for the beginner's guide to DaVinci Resolve. I hope you found that helpful and that it gave you a good introduction into the software. If you have any questions or feedback, drop them in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more, check out the other tutorials on the channel and subscribe for more content each week. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.